Hi, I'm Aaron Staling. Welcome to the Turkey Course. In this course, we're going to be going over how to mount a full mount or life-size turkey in the full strut pose. As you can see, we have a really nice Midwestern turkey here. This turkey is weighing in in the low 20s, probably like 21, 22 pounds. The actual weight of the turkey is not critical for determining the form size. It's just a rough and general guide. So it doesn't hurt to actually weigh the turkey when you get it in so you can have a rough idea of the form you're going to need. Many of the forms in the catalogs will go by weight and measurements. Some just actually go by weight. The particular forms I'm going to be recommending for this course all go by weight. But what really is going to determine the fit on the form is when we actually test it in the skin and that's done after we have the bird all skin flesh washed and dried. So at this point we're going to be going over some basic anatomy on the turkey. This is anatomy we'll be referring to throughout the turkey course. On your screen right now you're going to be seeing an actual live turkey. This is a reference picture we're going to be referring back to many times throughout the turkey course. This is the basic form and look we're going to be going after for our full strut turkey. Turkeys actually strut in many different ways and if you do a quick Google image search you'll see that every turkey actually struts a little different and they actually will change as they're going in and out of full strut and half strut and walking poses. But this particular bird you're looking at right now is very close to the style I use and recommend and is generally accepted as a full strut turkey by most clients. The first thing we're going to do is look at anatomy, going over some of the basic areas on the turkey. We'll start with the head. What I have in my hand here is the snood. This is actually used uh, during strutting to show dominance and to show age and maturity. When they're strutting, most of the time the snood will be actually draped down over the beak and be elongated. What you're looking at here is called the wattle area of the head. These are the major carnicles. And they also have ridges or carnicles throughout the rest of the turkey head. And most people are familiar with that. That'll be the job of the actual freeze dryer to bring all that back to life. We'll be going over that in depth later. These are the breast feathers and there's actually two groups of breast feathers. They're separated basically by the center of the bird or the beard. My finger is on the keel of the turkey right here. When you're actually mounting turkeys, I like to actually, in my mind, separate each of the feather groups out. What that does for me, it gives me a perspective of where they go as I'm actually putting the bird together. And it can also help with um, doing repairs later on. You want to think of the turkey as each separate feather group or block as you're mounting it. It can really help to put things in perspective and it also helps because it uh, will, as I'm explaining throughout the course, how these feather groups actually work with each other as we're mounting the turkey. They, they all actually work independently of each other. That's why it's important to separate or delineate them as you're starting out. Obviously we have the wing. These are the primaries, this whole group here, the secondaries, and these shiny feathers here are actually the wing coverts. These feathers are quite delicate, and if you're not careful with these, they can have kind of a ratty look. You can see that look's already started here. This is just from blood and being shot by the hunter. So we don't have to worry about that. We'll clean that up later. These are the underwing coverts. These generally aren't a big issue when we're actually working with the turkey. Especially on a full strut pose, you're not going to really see these. This is the drumstick. Um, it's also called the tibia. This is actually, this entire thing here is actually the foot of the turkey. And these are obviously the toes and the spur. For the turkey course though, I'm going to be referring to this as the turkey's leg because that's how it's generally referred to by most people. This is actually referred to this joint as the heel, but in this particular course we're just going to call it the joint between the leg and the drumstick. A 
flip the bird over. The feather group from the back of the head to about where my hand is, is the neck feathers or the back of the neck feathers. This particular group right here is the mantle feathers. This is what's actually going to be flattened up behind the turkey's head when it's in full strut. The next group are the scapular groups and they actually go over the top of the wing. And then you move back to the hackle feathers that run from the mantle feathers all the way to the tail. And then of course we have our tail and we have our tail coverts, which are these. And I'm going to swivel this so you can see underneath the tail, we have our under tail coverts, which are these feathers. And of course we have the beard. I did draw a quick illustration on the board, just listing out some of the basic anatomical points on the turkey. You can see I actually have the head of a turkey drawn in here in the neck bend and how it actually would relate to a full strut turkey. The neck does not come straight out and up into the head. It actually curves down and then up into the head. The actual neck of the turkey goes right to the base of the skull, which would be right here. What you're looking at here is the ear and the eye. You can see that bend. One important point when you're doing a full strut turkey is to keep in mind that the expansion or the sponge sacs that are developed by the turkey during the spring when it's strutting are actually occurring throughout this entire area right here where that dotted line is. As you can see that actually the actual neck of the turkey is compressed into this area. This is also where the crop is. So when a turkey is in full strut and this sponge sack is full of air, the neck and the crop is flattened right into it. There's no need to rebuild this whole neck on our actual mount we're going to be doing. This will actually be rebuilt with uh, Bondo, believe it or not. The actual necking we'll be dealing with is only this area from where my finger is up into the head. We'll be going into greater detail on that as we move into the form prep. Another important point I want to just quickly cover with my drawing is the sweep you're seeing here. Now if this was an actual full strut form, I might actually have this whole form tilted down a little bit more, but just for an illustrational purposes, I want you to see this sweep. This sweep is what's going to give you a nice furl of hackle with the high point of the hackle actually being here and moving back towards the tail. And it actually drops slightly towards the head as well. This is very important. Many turkey forms, including the turkey form we're going to be using, don't have this sweep down in it. We're going to actually be modifying the form to accommodate that sweep. That's a critical point to making a very nice looking turkey mount. Another thing I want to quickly cover is when a turkey is strutting, they're displaying their feathers. That's very important to actually get into your head now. You have to ask yourself, what is the actual purpose of the turkey strutting? What are they trying to accomplish? They're trying to show off all of their feather groups. So as you're mounting the turkey and as we're going through the steps, we want to be displaying all the feathers at all times. That means the hackle is not going to be bunched up against the tail. It's not going to be bunched up against the head. The wings are going to be completely out. The breast feathers are actually going to be out. And the rest of the feathers are all going to be shingled or displayed. You don't want anything compressed. As you get into half struts and into walking poses, then you can actually have some compression of the hackle groups and some of the other groups, but not with a full strut. And we're doing an actual full strut turkey, not a half strut in this case. Another thing I want to quickly cover with my illustration again is go back to this expansion. That's that dotted line I made right here. Where the expansion is actually occurring on a turkey is in this area. It is not occurring as heavily down in this area. Many of the turkey forms on the market actually have quite a bit of the expansion exhibiting in this area. That is actually incorrect. What's happening is the expansion is occurring here, pulling this loose skin from this area up 
and giving the turkey a wide skirted look at the keel area. Now we can certainly use forms that have a lot of expansion in this area, even if it's incorrect and they will look good. But if on some of the forms that have too much expansion in this particular area, they can be difficult to work with for that reason. Also, quite a few of the commercial forms will have this particular area of expansion too large. And they're doing that to accommodate the fact that most turkey mounts are not done with the breast feathers shingled. When a turkey is strutting in most cases, the breast feathers are vented or shingled or they're lifted up to make the bird look bigger. On most commercial mounts, this is not done for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, it takes more time. Number two, it's more difficult. And number three, there's, if there's any breast feather damage, it can be difficult to repair and hide with that particular pose. So quite often, they're just a smooth breasted mount, which is more than acceptable. Your customers will love that kind of a mount. That's what's normally done. We're actually going to be going over how to do a smooth breasted mount in this course and a shingled mount. But because we're actually going to be showing you how to do a shingled mount, you're going to see how you don't need as much expansion to achieve a large breasted looking turkey.